Hello everyone, SolarJ here. Today I'm going to show you two ways of integrating your rhythm into Ableton. One via the Overbridge software and two with input monitoring. By the end of this video, you will understand which one suits better your goal and your workflow and maybe learn something about latency, input monitoring and MIDI. Let's go! First of all, we need connection and the way the rhythm and Ableton talk to each other is via USB. So first just connect a USB cable between your rhythm and your computer and then to check if the connection is established you can do two things. First you can go on Ableton, Preference, Link, Tempo, MIDI and see that the electrum is actually recognized by, by Ableton. And you can leave these two ticked in theory, that's how it should be because we want to send out both MIDI signal and tempo transport information but in my system it also works without any of these two ticked so up to you. Secondly, you can open up the transfer app and also see that the device is nicely recognized. And of course you have to put the rhythm into overbridge mode like this. To use overbridge in Ableton, you need to create an empty MIDI track, load up the analog rhythm plugin, and you should see something like this. Once this is done and the analog rhythm is recognized also in this way, you can then press play and since they are synced, the analog rhythm will start shooting audio into this track, like this. So you can leave it like this and just use the master output of the rhythm. Here you will have all the master effects like distortion, compression and also the single track effects like reverb and delay or you can create many audio track as many as you want and set the input to first drop down menu into the name of this track and second drop down menu whatever you want to route into that for instance we can route the bass drum notice that the input monitoring is on if i put it off i don't hear anything and here all the effects like delay here will not work or you know reverb while if i go back to this and then add some delay for instance on the kick you hear that that's working just fine and the same goes for the compressor and the master distortion so this configuration is quite cool for producing because you have single output audio tracks and here you can add your effects, um, delays, reverb, distortion, whatever you want. You can do sound design on the output of the rhythm. On the other hand, if you use this configuration where you only listen to the master, here, you know, through the overbridge, you can record automation like this, for instance. And you see now that if I press A, there was the automation of the delay sand for the tab, the, the pad one, which is pretty cool. But for live performances using Overbridge, I'm not sure if it's a great idea because of course this, as you can see here, it introduces 30 milliseconds of uh, latency and it's some overhead for your laptop, which you want to reduce in live performance kind of setups. One more live friendly configuration is to just do input monitoring. Let's see how. So if we open uh, just a simple audio track and we put the input to whatever input in your audio card, the rhythm is connected in my system in input seven and eight. So it's here. You can just put in and you will have the master. Now I'm muting on the device like kick and snare. So yeah, you just have the output of the rhythm. When you do this, remember to disable the direct input monitoring on your audio card or to turn the output level to zero, otherwise you will have duplicate sounds. And this is because when you connect your rhythm to your audio card, this sends audio there, right? And then the audio card, when it's connected to Ableton, it can do two things. It can let you hear the direct input as if you put the plugs, the earphones plug in your in the rhythm directly, 
or you can send the audio to Ableton first and then let you hear what comes out of that. And this is what happens when you press the IN button here. The audio first goes to Ableton and then to your headphones. So you need to disable the direct input from your audio card, otherwise you will have the Ableton plus the direct input monitoring summed up together. And sometimes there is latency and it's just horrible. So every audio card has a different way of doing that. Check your own system how to, to do it. Once this is set up, basically all the master effects, of course, will work and you can change them via the rhythm. So now I'm muting, um, adding overdrive to the kick or some delay. I mean, you can control the rhythm, your hardware while playing live and listening it into Ableton. And by the way, I used this configuration in one of my previous videos. Check it out if you want to see a practical application for a live performance. Okay, now you might ask, what's the difference between using the overbridge without single audio tracks and the rhythm direct input? Well, it's a good question, but for live performances, it has a very good and important answer. It's about latency. Check this out. If I record both the direct input and the plugin, for which I need another audio track. This is what happens. You can already hear this chorus kind of effect, meaning that they are kind of out of phase. They are not completely in sync. And let's see which one is more in sync. Just zoom in. And you see that the direct input is quite on time. You see like this is like an upbeat, starts with a bit of latency, but look what happens when you use the overbridge. So you don't want this extra latency in your live setup. That's why I prefer to use the input monitoring when using the analog rhythm inside Ableton. So in this video, we saw how to integrate your analog rhythm into Ableton, both in an offline production environment or in a live performance kind of setup. We covered the connectivity, the input monitoring and the latency issue, comparing the input monitoring configuration with the overbridge configuration. If you found this video useful, don't miss out on liking and subscribing to the channel. And if you want to see a practical application of the input monitor configuration, check out this video right here somewhere. Thanks for watching and see you next time.